apparently you have also done stand-up comedy. What? Am I making this up? Is this a rumor? Stand-up comedy? When did I do stand-up comedy? Didn't you get up on stage and do stand-up comedy at one of the, like, company events? Hi, and welcome to the second episode of Learn English with Amy. In this episode, I speak with a very funny guy. So funny that I thought he'd done stand-up comedy before. He has an interesting name, which he will spell for you and explain what it means. He'll talk about learning to communicate with locals in Southeast Asia and in German with his father-in-law. He will also talk about the positive side of all these video calls that we're doing in this time. Never look a gift horse in the mouth is one of his favorite sayings, and he will explain to you what it means in his own words. Be sure to listen to the bonus episode for his top tip for getting really good at speaking English. Let's get started. We start with my guest telling us his name and how to spell it. Dara, Dara Everett. There's only one Dara Everett, but um, yeah, just Dara. Dara's fine. D-A-R-A-G-H. And Dara, where did you grow up? I grew up in the UK. In, uh, I grew up in Rygate. And where do you live now? I live in uh, Crawley, which is just near Gatwick Airport. And what sort of name is Dara for people who might not understand? It's a very interesting name to grow up with. I'll tell you that in the UK. It's an Irish name uh, and it means man of black oak. Um, so yeah, it's always been a bit of a, a conversation starter um, from school classes to jobs to if I'm missing in a shopping centre. <laughs> there's, there's always a pause before my name. Uh, and we're looking for a um, Dara. -ha. So yeah, I'll spell a bit. There is, a, I don't know if you've seen it, but on YouTube, there's a whole channel which is dedicated to helping people understand how to pronounce Irish names. Because I've I've seen some, come across some names, I'm like, I have, I have no idea how to say that. And then I go and, and play it on, on that channel. And I thought, wow, that is not anything that I would have guessed. Nowhere near. It is really handy. It, I've used <laughs> that a lot as well. Um, but it's also unisex, so it's for, it's for girls as well. If for a girl, it means goddess of the ocean. I did not know that. So a man, you said it means a man of, of black oak. What does that mean exactly? I have no idea. It's strong. It's a strong name. Oak strong. <laughs> but it, has, it has led me down a path of when I went backpacking, I found it really interesting to find out what my name meant in other languages. So it's open to interpretation because you just have to go by how you're saying your name. So I would say Dara. And it was interesting across Southeast Asia, although it was different, it was very similar. So star or blood or life or famous. So all things that are quite, I don't know, like star and famous, star is in the sky, in the night sky or famous. Those are kind of similar in, in, a, in, a, in a, some sort of context or life or blood, some other ones. Yeah, so in Indonesian, I think it meant blood or life. Um, but also figuring out what they meant was very difficult because I didn't speak their language. So they kept pointing to their arm and I thought, do they mean skin, hair, <laughs> arm, blood, <laughs> blood. Yes, it's blood. It might not be blood at all. When you were traveling, did you learn any of the local languages? Yeah, I always liked to learn a few phrases and actually interesting enough because of what you're doing. OK, hello is good. Goodbye. But instead of goodbye, I liked to find out how to say see you again, because goodbye is always so final. And I thought see you again would be different. And they might think, oh, he speaks a bit of Vietnamese, um, which, <laughs> you know, so goodbye <laughs> would be see you again instead of goodbye. And you'd be surprised at the reaction you'd get in a shop when you'd say hang up fly when you walked out and they'd be like, oh, oh, that's different. People don't usually say that, you know, I like to learn enough. Oh, that's really sweet. And did you, what was the reaction when you did try, did you find that it differed in different countries when you tried to speak the language? Some, you know, I think in different places yes. they react differently. How was it yeah, in Vietnam, Vietnam, for instance? They, they, to be honest, they were also, also really welcoming, really, like really nice. But you did notice a difference between North and South. The, 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 the further um, North you got, it seemed to be more busy and rushed and there wasn't, they were lovely and welcoming, but there wasn't as much time to help teach you bits and bobs. But the more South, they got a bit more relaxed. 
but yeah they yeah they they would they would love it they would get so excited when you'd learn their language and especially if you learn different phrases i found that as well with with family my wife's father's german uh -huh. and going over to germany was brilliant fun learning different phrases i'd always like to find the really interesting you know like germany's hilarious so matchbox um matchbox would be something like streichholzschistelchen so <laughs> The, 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 the word is something like the, 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 the match that strikes the box or something. It explains a whole story rather than just saying, have you got a matchbox? It would be, have you got the wooden stick that strikes and creates fire? Something along that line. So, so yeah, it was always interesting. Dara, how, how do you and I know each other? Through work. You were my manager many moons ago. In fact, I can't remember how long ago that was now. No, it was a while ago now, wasn't it? I like to say that we worked together, not that like I managed you. We were colleagues, right? Yes. Yes. Equals, we were, clearly. We were team. Equals. Yeah. Except I like I like to have longer meetings than you did. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It's nice to be here doing this. No meetings. Speaking of, for uh, yeah. in these times, are you do you find yourself having to have a lot of Zoom or other video meetings? Yes, I have, and uh, yeah, I've never had so many video calls. It's great because you literally just have to make the front profile of yourself look good. So my lockdown <laughs> haircut has been unnoticed unless I look behind me at a child making noise. No one sees the mistakes. I've, I've cut my own hair. Oh, go fast. Looks great. So um, are you saying it's long in the back, like business up front, part in the back? Got a massive mullet at the back. Um, <laughs> but you, you do have to be careful because my brother sent me a picture of a get together that they had after COVID and I started saying about one of the guys, wow, he's brave coming out with his lockdown haircut. And my brother said, actually, that's just the way his hair is. We don't ask him why he has it like that. <laughs> he's got like a, a weird mullet thing going on. But yeah, yeah, it's 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 really good to have the the video calls. It has there's been a lot of benefits and a lot of uh, you know positives that have come out of COVID. Um, people reaching out to each other more on a on a personal note, families and but also the um, the nature of your role, I think it's still similar, is that you are responsible for helping clients use technology and use systems. And that was always over the phone and with, um, with maybe Skype or just audio chat, right? And then showing screens. Have you found that people are now more comfortable to, to just do a video call with you? They're all jumping into it and it's lovely to see them at home and, you know, being trained by other people and having a child run in with a kite with a problem and I've had all sorts, you know, I've seen people, you know, I was on a Zoom, a Zoom call with a couple of friends and I didn't even realise that one of them own, lives on a farm and uh, I heard all these weird noises. He goes, oh, that's the sheep. He's just like, yeah, didn't know. So it's interesting, not just about work, but with your friends that you, I mean, he is a friend of a friend, but I should have known, you would have thought you'd have known that sort of stuff. And it took a, a pandemic and a Zoom call to, to make you realise he lives on a farm for crying out loud, you know. But I think you're right. I think it's nice that um, you get to see another side of people. But I suppose for you, because there were, there were so many clients that would be like, oh, Dara, how is he? You're like, the, you're like the, always, the, you were always a favorite, and I'm sure you still are. Um, but, but people were like, oh, I want to meet him because I have no idea what he looks like. When am I going to meet Dara? Is he here? You know, when we would go to conferences and stuff. And so now, not only, I guess, do you, have you met some of them, I say in quotes because it's over Zoom, but you now know where they live, if they have kids, what their pets look like, right? Yeah, definitely. It's helped. It has actually helped massively forming some really good relationships with clients, especially if they're, they're not having a great time for one reason or another. Not, yeah, obviously not because of the company I work for. People can see your face and as much as it's good to learn the spoken language, you know, the body language is really important. Someone can say something and mean something completely different. So Dara, I don't know if you um, have a favorite or least favorite English word or expression. So, but if you do, I would love to know what is your favorite English word or expression firstly. I don't know. I don't think I do have, a, I don't have a favorite. I do like, I love sayings and where they come from. Um, and and I, like, I like the never look a gift horse in the mouth. Oh, that's a good one. Never look a gift horse in the mouth, which for our listeners, how would you describe what the, the definition of that or the meaning of it? Yeah, if some, well, if someone, it came from, which explains it, it came from uh, if someone was to give you a horse, you wouldn't look in its mouth because the mouth would tell you the health and the age.